With Detroit Become Human coming out really soon, I wanted to go back and experience one of Quantic Dream's previous works. Beyond Two Souls was a game that I was told to stay away from as it wasn't apparently very good, but a lot of people recommended I check out Heavy Rain. So that is what I did. I completed Heavy Rain a few days ago, and I wanted to give my thoughts on the title. What's going on, guys? Randall Thor 19 the man with the million, back again with another video. And uh, you're probably wondering, Rand, Heavy Rain's eight years old. What are you doing reviewing a game this old? And I would agree with you. I know really is nobody's going to watch this. Who's looking for a review of Heavy Rain in 2018? But I did have quite a few subscribers hit me up in DMs asking me uh, to give my thoughts on the title. So why not make a video and talk about this title? Now, Heavy Rain is a game that I would consider myself predisposed to like. It is in the genre of that cinematic, interactive game with not a lot of actual gameplay to it. It's very much like a Telltale game or Life is Strange if you've played those. So, which is why I was a little bit surprised to find I wasn't enjoying it as much as I thought it would. I actually looked on Metacritic and saw it was an 87, and I thought to myself, hey, this, this game's gonna be great. And I ended up just liking it okay, because it does have some issues that I just couldn't get over, despite the fact that there is some things I really enjoyed. So what is the whole setup to the game? Well, there is a silly serial killer going around, murdering boys between the ages of like 5 and 10 by drowning them in rainwater. He's called the Origami Killer, and there's this whole mystery surrounding who he is and how he kills his victims and all that stuff, which I found to be the best part of the game. You play as four characters, Ethan Mars, Scott Shelby, Madison Page, and Norman Jane, and their stories will intersect and constantly change. One second you'll be playing as Ethan as he's trying to rescue his son, while the next you might be playing as Norman, trying to figure out exactly who the origami killer is with all the evidence presented to him. Now, Ethan, I would consider to be the main character of the game. He is the father of the abducted son. His eldest son was killed on his watch when he wandered away from him at a mall and was hit by a car and died. So Ethan blames himself for the death of his son and is trying to do whatever it takes to get his son back from the origami killer. And it was his story and the trials that he goes through that were the best part of Heavy Rain. And one of the reasons why I actually am going to rate it a little bit higher uh, than I really should, to be quite honest with you. Scott Shelby is a private investigator going around asking questions of the origami killer's victims and trying to figure out who he is. Madison Page is a journalist who kind of wants to get the scoop on the story and interjects herself into the life of Ethan Mars and may or may not become romantically uh, involved with him depending on your choices because this is a, you know, uh, basically a choose-your-own-adventure type of video game. And Norman Jaden is an FBI agent assigned to the case to try to figure out who the origami killer is before he kills again. And he uses this really high-tech Matrix-like uh, technology through the glasses and a glove to really analyze clues and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. But one of the reasons I don't feel the game is great is because of some of the Mars that it does have. Some of the things it does wrong, namely the poor controls. So you walk around a crime scene or any scene in particular and you have to hold the R2 button to do so while you turn with the left stick. It's not exactly intuitive and I never really got used to it at all. And most of the gameplay is basic quick time events which honestly I don't really have a problem with but there are, are, there are quite a bit of them and there are a few fights and uh, battles that kind of get intense but never really feel like you could lose them. There's always enough time to input the selection. And I did not, I did not enjoy the forced inclusion of motion controls. Uh, there would be some inputs that have to be done with the controller by going up or down with it. And I, I hate motion controls and it didn't really work well in this game. The other thing that I found to be quite bad actually was the voice acting. None of the main characters and none of the people in the game delivered their lines with really any oomph. There was it, it, I, 
in a game like this, where there's not much gameplay, the quality of the title is really dependent on the strength of the characters and their story, the narrative that is being told, the mystery and all those things, and the voice acting was just so bad. And maybe it's because they picked the wrong actors, or maybe because it was the script was as bad as it was. I'm not really sure. But those are two big blemishes on the title for me. Now, what I really did enjoy was the mystery surrounding the Origami Killer, trying to figure out who he was, and Ethan's journey to try to save his son. He's presented with four trials to basically find out the location of his abducted son, and what he goes through to get him back is really interesting. The moral dilemmas that are presented to you, very much like the movie Saw. You're presented in these some gruesome scenarios. Would you cut off your finger to learn his location? Would you kill somebody in cold blood or perhaps drink some poison to find your son? I really enjoyed that aspect of the title and I felt his story was, you know, the the best part of the game. Uh, Scott Shelby, I don't know. He only had a really couple really interesting scenes. Otherwise, he just wasn't that very interesting. Madison Page, it seemed to me she was just inserted into the game because Quantic Dream wanted some eye candy. She's introduced in the beginning of the game wearing a tight white shirt and some panties and she constantly and quite often gets naked throughout the title and I just felt she was she really served no purpose other than being eye candy for the dudes out there. And Norman Jaden, she he had some pr- pretty interesting technology trying to analyze clues and stuff like that, but His battle with his drug addiction or whatever it was just wasn't cutting the mustard. So the only one here that was really interesting was Ethan, which, you know, you can probably figure out why I didn't enjoy the game as much as I thought. And let's actually talk about the reveal here about who the origami killer is. While I enjoyed the journey of figuring out who it was and Ethan's struggle to get his son back, the extra reveal of Scott Shelby, the man you've been playing as, throughout the entire game as the origami killer just didn't make any sense it was a cool reveal that oh my god here's this dude i've been playing as and he's the bad guy but you're like wait a minute i didn't really kidnap his son i don't remember doing all this stuff and it was fact one scene in particular which really irked me is when he go to meet the clockmaker to figure out who potentially is on the list of you know the the, the subject uh this the killer's used a typewriter, and it's on his thing. You end up going there in control of Scott, and suddenly that guy dies. And in a flashback when it's revealed that Scott's the serial killer, uh, he killed him in a thing you never saw, even though you were controlling him. Completely absurd, and I just kind of had to laugh about it. But I understood why he became a serial killer. I mean, his justifications and, you know, the fact that his twin brother was drowning and his drunk father who hated them didn't want to save anything so he's been searching for a father who would do anything i understood the reasons behind that and i thought that aspect of it was good but man the acting in conjunction with the poor controls the graphics that really eh, you know ps3 game remastered i guess they're fine but some areas just weren't very good, especially when the characters smile. Now, I will say the music in this game was quite fantastic, so kudos to whoever put that together because it really did elevate certain scenes. But for the most part, Heavy Rain just kind of fell flat for me. Maybe it would be a game I would have enjoyed had I played it originally back in 2010, much like the original Uncharted if I played that back when it first launched. This game probably was really unique, but now there's just so many clones of what Heavy Rain is basically doing that you've played a game pretty similar. In fact, I have recently on the PS4, and that's Until Dawn. Until Dawn is a million times better than Heavy Rain, and it's basically the same type of game. So if you're out there wondering if you should play Heavy Rain or Until Dawn, I would say play until dawn they're very similar 
And Until Dawn has a much better story with better characters, better voice acting, better graphics. It's just a better title. That's not to say Heavy Rain is a bad game by any, by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not one that I would recommend very much, which is why I would give the game a 6.5. Um, my frustrations basically were with the voice acting and some of the characters being sup- just not interesting and just inserted there for eye candy. Um, while Ethan's story was really cool to experience, making the choices of you know, trying to save your son. It was the only interesting part of the eight-hour experience. And while quick time events maybe weren't that common back in 2010, and they're a dime a dozen now. In fact, you know, you get pretty tired of doing them. So I think Heavy Rain is just a product of his time. And hopefully Detroit Become Human is a much better game uh, for you know, now, for, for for this point in time in 2018. And we'll find out soon because I'm going to be playing it later tonight. Anyways, guys, that's my thoughts on Heavy Rain. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. I want to thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.